Welcome back to the lab. Today is going to be a lot of fun. Why? Well, remember that one time when I impulse bought some stuff on Amazon and uh, we built a thermal camera out of it? That was pretty fun. In fact, that was one of the most fun videos that we've made in a little while and I kind of liked the feel. So here's what we're going to try today. Here's what we're going to do. Basically, I went on Amazon <laughs> and I saw that something was on sale. And see, here's why I was curious about it. Remember that one time when we tried to build a UPS? <laughs> oh, right, yeah, remember that time where we failed to build a UPS? Not once, but twice. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, inverters, while simple in principle, <laughs> there's a few nuances that make them very, very difficult to build in practice. <laughs> and this, my friends, is a little inverter module. So. Let's get this on the bench, let's unbox it, and let's see exactly why I was so curious and why I just had to try it out. Let's talk about exactly why I am so excited to get my hands on this thing. Here's what I know. Here's what I know. Basically, what I know is this product is made to take 12 volts in and make 120 volts and basically it takes it says it's rated from 11 to 15 volts in and 110 to 120 volts out and it's rated up to 300 watts it has all kinds of protection built in uh built to one and a half kv isolation five milliamp limit efficiency greater than 83 percent temperature range cord length blah, 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 size okay and it's got a few different indicator light modes. Interesting. Here's what else I know. I know that somehow they need to be converting 12 volts to 120 volts AC. The way that we wanted to do that was with one DC to DC converter that stepped up the voltage from 12 to something higher. And then uh, we chopped that up and we spat out some AC, okay? Another way that you can do that is chop it up on the low voltage side, use a line frequency transformer to step that up, and then you get your AC out. So why am I so curious about this product? Well, this thing is small, very small, incredibly small. It is so small that I know that the transformers we designed wouldn't fit. They wouldn't, I know they wouldn't fit, and that was, Basic, that basically tells me they're not using a two-stage method here. And it also tells me they're not using a line frequency transform because if they were, it wouldn't fit. So somehow, they're managing to go from 12 volts DC to 120 volts AC with one stage of conversion. And it has to be high frequency. Interesting. Very interesting. I haven't seen anything like this before. Well, I mean, I've seen lots of products like this before, but I never really thought about them. I just thought, ah, they probably make nasty, terrible AC that's just miserable to work with, so why would I ever use one? And that's about where that thought process went. So let's tear this thing apart, see how it works, and uh, see if we want to learn something from this that we might apply to our inverter project. Uh, this is where that whole disclaimer part comes in. Uh, don't do this ever or you'll die <laughs> seriously though there could be high voltage inside this thing so sure enough uh we see a couple daughter cards in here probably just a packet within the enclosure uh, looks like no appreciable heat sinking to the outside world, just one little heat sink. This thing cannot burn much power. Thinking about how much heat they're trying to burn out of this heat sink, it says it's at least 83% efficient and uh, pushing 300 watts through the thing. So a little bit of pocket math, 300 watts, 83%. That means this thing could be burning at most 51 watts in that tiny little heat sink. I'm not here to judge, but I doubt it. That's a pretty small heat sink to push 50 watts through. Okay, let's look at what they've got in here. 
Uh, I see ESD diodes, so TVS diodes. Um, I see, what are those giant diodes? Can't find a part number. I just can't quite get to a part number. Um, oh, wait, getting close. A little bit of light. Uh, I see, what do I see? I see JCS6405, or S, maybe. Uh, I'll have to look that up. I'll throw a data sheet up if I can find it. Got two of those next to each other. A bunch of TVS diodes. Oh, four of those. Oh! JCS 640S and a EAST SOFT. This board is otherwise unlabeled. Just those parts. And then we have a high frequency transformer labeled 12 volts, 110 volts. So my guess is what they're doing. My guess is that they are. So it looks like these FETs that have the heat sink on it, they appear to be switching a transfer. So there appears to be a low voltage side here and then a high voltage side of the board. And it looks like we've got 12 volts DC coming in. And it looks like got a couple switch mode power supplies. I'll flip this board around so you can see it a little better. Got some switch mode power supplies. You can see the little inductors. You can see a few different parts, little controllers. A lot of MLCCs, looks like a combo of chokes, some caps. And ultimately it looks like those are driving some big, I'm gonna guess those are MOSFETs. Uh, with a 20 or 30 amp fuse soldered in. Lots of thick traces. Okay. So my guess is they're running some kind of transformered isolated power supply. That's pretty obvious by the transformer. But what is it that they are doing on the high voltage side? Uh, those are labeled Q. Let's look these up. I wonder if they're doing what we meant to do just better. <laughs> that would be funny if this was actually a two stage high voltage DC bus and they chopped it up and spat it out. That would be amazing. One moment while I look up that part number. Well, I'll be darned. That is a 200 volt MOSFET rated for 18 amps. And there's four of them, which would make an H bridge. Are they making 110 volts AC and then chopping it up and spitting it out? Is that, do, are, they, are they seriously using the topology that we tried? Well, I guess we weren't totally out in the weeds. I don't know what this part is. Uh, I searched for E-A-S-T-O-F-T and microcontrollers comes up. Yes, yeah, so this brand is apparently uh, IC design. So maybe it's an ASIC, maybe it's a microcontroller. It could be a Chinese source microcontroller. Probe the first, probe the second. Hey, let's see how this thing works. 120 volts. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> I almost blew this thing up so bad. It's hooked up to the milliamp port. Whew. That would have been exciting. Okay, uh, let's not do that. Okay, uh, let's try this. What are we getting? Getting 100 and 111? 111 volts, okay. So this is rated for 12 volt DC input. And I'm just gonna tweak the voltage a little bit and we're gonna see what the change is. So at 12 volts, we got 111 volts. At 12.5, got 107. At 11.5, we got a 115? How is that an inverse proportional relationship? That, that would explain why their high voltage FETs don't require 
nearly as much uh, power dissipation as ours did. Yeah, because they're hard switching. You know, that is something we could try with our old prototype. I think that would probably go a lot better. That... Why didn't we try that? Um, okay. Note to self, dig out the old UPS prototype, change the firmware for hard switching, see how much better that works. I... Yeah, you'd think that I'd think about... Okay. <clears throat> Whatever. Anyways, so, yeah, we're gonna try that very soon. Um... Oh, interesting. See that? It's actually adjusting. What in the world is going on? Why is it doing that? Maybe it's doing that to keep the power the same? So either way, it appears that their DC to DC converter is dumb, and then their high voltage converter is adjusting the dead time based on the input voltage. So yeah, as the input voltage goes up, as the input voltage goes up, it gives you more dead time at a higher peak. Interesting. Uh, not exactly what I expected. What's the peak to peak here? Uh, I'm reading this upside down, my apologies. Um, ah, 268 volts. So it looks like we've got a fixed frequency um, switcher going up to, sorry, fixed frequency and fixed duty cycle switcher coming in, and then they chop it up different on the high voltage side with a microcontroller. Then they have their smarts happening somewheres. Um, based on the position, I would say it looks like it's on the low voltage side where they're doing their fault monitoring, which kind of makes sense. So it's under voltage and over voltage. Ah, on the input! Right, because it's fixed frequency, so they know the ratio. Mmm. Overload would be, yeah, on the input. They could do that on the input. Short circuit, they could probably do that on the input as well. It's basically the same as overload protection. Yeah. Okay. So that's basically all I think there really is to learn about this. We know their architecture was fundamentally the same as ours, just um, they're doing hard switching with an ugly sine wave coming out, and that's about all there is to it. Well, there you go. That was not exactly what I expected. I was, I walked into this video with a lot of questions, and we left this video with a lot of answers. That's something that we're going to need to think about uh, as we consider kicking off this new inverter series. And if nothing else, well, maybe we'll be able to trust plugging some stuff into this if we're in a pinch and we're on the road. Hey, this is awesome. Thank you for watching it forever, and thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you for those that support us in any means through being a Patreon member, through supporting us uh, as a Google, uh, oh my goodness, a channel member. I think that's what it's called, a channel member. Thank you. We're gonna put a list of names of folks at the end of this video. Seriously, thank you for your direct support of this channel. You are really a huge part of keeping this all possible. Thank you. Thank you for those that watch, subscribe, ring that bell, everything that you guys do in the comments to keep this channel going. I really, really appreciate your time and attention. It's really awesome to see this community take off. Anyways, I'm starting to ramble. We better close this out and I will see you in the next one. Bye.